Welcome to the Tool Review Channel. Today we are taking a look at the Snap-on 9-inch pair of side-cutting or linesman pliers. Now the model number for this specific pair of pliers is 59AHLP. And to start off the video here, you can see you have these nice, um, Snap-on likes to call these comfort grip handles. Uh, and it's a dipped handle that has a bunch of different texture to it. Um, so if your hands are oily or greasy, uh, like traditional, uh, just standard dip pliers, they'll easily fall out of your hands. Uh, with that texture on there, it's, you know, you're able to get a nice grip and not have to worry about them falling out of your hands. And then coming to the back side of this plier, you can see you have a nice uh, alignment of teeth. And as you can see, they go from large and then they start to get a little bit smaller and smaller as you go back. And you have that on both sides of the plier. So if you needed to really grip onto something and pull it, or you wanted to twist something with that, you could definitely use those teeth back there. And then as you can see right here, you have your model number laser etched onto the surface of the plier. And you have the snap-on name laser etched onto there as well. And you have USA as well. And you can see your rivet right there as well. And it is super close to that cutting edge. Um, so that is going to allow you to cut through material a lot easier than if it was a little bit farther away. So it is a high leverage design combined with that rivet and the long handles on there. And then coming to the business end, you can see you have a nice set of cutters right there. And then the one thing that really... Um, surprising me about these is the knurling or the cross hatching design is like the deepest I think I've seen. Uh, it's the most deepest and aggressive that I've seen on a pair of linesman pliers. Um, so that's really going to give you a good amount of grip to grip onto whatever you needed to grip. If you need to twist wire, a pull wire, or grip onto a, um, a pin or a screw or something, you know, pull on it, that cross hatching design is definitely going to be something um, that is... Um, something that's going to be very helpful and then coming to the back side it's relatively simple you can see your rivet close to the cutting edge now i believe the cutting knives on here are induction hardened um that is why you can see the different colors in the metal uh right there um but that's really about it for the detail uh, on this plier um now we'll get to some of the functionality of the plier and see how well that they will perform so we're going to first start off with some 18 gauge solid wire right here and see how well we can cut through that uh, so we'll go ahead and put that guy in there, and as you see right there, we are able to cut through it no problem uh, whatsoever. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side, and we're going to bring in some 18-gauge stranded wire and see how well we can cut through this. And as you can see right there, we are able to cut through it. It doesn't quite cut through that insulation all the way. Uh, you just kind of have to pull on it, uh, but it will cut through the wire. Uh, it just depends on where you put it uh, on the plier. As you see right there, you kind of have to pull off that insulation a little bit, uh, but it will cut through the wire no problem. So we'll get that out of there and we'll bring in our next wire, which is going to be some 14 gauge solid wire. So we'll bring that guy in right here and we'll go ahead and cut through this guy as well. And as you see right there, we're able to cut through that 14 gauge solid wire. No problem whatsoever, which is nice. And I do find that wire does like to get stuck into the jaws right here, as you can see right there. Um, it's just, you know, kind of happens. So we'll bring in some 12 gauge solid wire right here and see how well we can cut through this. And as you can see right there, you are able to cut through it. You just got to kind of pull off that in a little bit of insulation right there as well. But it will cut through that 12 gauge solid wire, no problem whatsoever. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side and we'll bring in our next wire. We're going to bring in some stranded wires. So typically we like to use some 14 gauge stranded wire right here. Go ahead and cut through that. And you can see we we're able to cut through it and you just kind of have to pull off that little glass, little bit of insulation, but it will cut through that wire. And it actually does a fairly decent cut as well. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side. And we'll bring in some 12 gauge stranded wire right here. And we'll go ahead and see how well we can cut through that. And as you can see right there, we are able to cut through that 12 gauge stranded wire. No problem uh, whatsoever. So we'll set that off to the side and we will bring in some 10 gauge stranded wire. And we'll go ahead and cut through this guy. And as you can see right there, we're able to cut through it. No problem uh, whatsoever. And we'll go ahead and set that guy off to the side. And we will get that guy out of there and get all this out of the background. And now we will bring in some 18 or 5 thermostat wire and see how well we can cut through that. So we're cutting through 5 18 gauge uh, solid wires. And as you can see right there, we are able to cut that. Um, we are able to cut the wires, but as you can see right there, you're not able to get through that uh, little piece of insulation there on the inside. So we'll go ahead and try that one more time. And as you can see, we kind of did it, but there's still some, you know, frayed little edges right there. So we are able to get through some thermostat wire as well. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side and we'll bring in our Romex wire. So we're going to start off with some 14-2 with ground Romex wire right here. And as you can see right there, we cut through that no problem whatsoever, uh, which is nice. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side and we will bring in our 12-2 with ground Romex wire right here and put that in the cutting jaws. And we are able, as you can see right there, we are able to cut through that stuff no problem whatsoever and pull the wires out right there as well. 
Um, so overall, these are definitely a pretty good pair of uh, lineman pliers from Snap-on. Now, as you saw, it can be a little bit challenging to cut through that wire completely. You kind of have to pull on it. And I believe that is because the cutting jaws, I'm not sure how well we can see this, but you can kind of see daylight popping through on the backside. Uh, you can see there's quite a bit of gap um, behind those cutting jaws, uh, which is kind of disappointing considering it's a snap-on tool. You would think that they would have that gap closed up. Um, but that's kind of really my only complaint, but it obviously doesn't have really affect the tool uh, that much as well. As you can see, it still cut through the majority of the wire that we had to throw at it. Um, so I'm sure if you need to cut through pins or pull some pins out and stuff like that, I'm sure you could do that with that car hardened uh, cutting jaw on there as well, which is nice. Um, not really sure if this is meant for deburring. So if you know someone in the trades, you buy this. Um, I'm not sure if you can really use this for deburring. You might be able to give it a try. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to use it for deburring or not. It doesn't really feel that sharp. Uh, it just doesn't feel like it's meant for deburring, but you never know. I could be wrong. Um, but that being said, these are mainly marketed towards the automotive guys. Obviously, they like you know the Snap-on brand and stuff like that. Uh, so that's who I think these are mainly uh, marketed towards. Um, and that's mainly how uh, you know a lot of people get them unless you want to order from Snap-on's website. You know, they get a tool truck that comes to them. Uh, so I'm sure the tool truck stocks these. I'm not sure. I've never been on a tool truck before, so I couldn't, I, I'm not really sure. Um, but they're definitely not the cheapest pair of linesman pliers. So sorry about that. They're definitely not the cheapest pair of linesman pliers out there. Um, <laughs> they cost just as much uh, as a pair of, you know, nice Knipex uh, linesman pliers. So if you, you know, you're stuck between which one you want to get, um, it's, you know, it's really up to you. Uh, one's made in the USA and the other's made in Germany. Uh, but they're both, you know, a good high quality pair of linesman pliers. And I definitely could recommend them to anybody uh, if you're looking to pick them up. Um, just, you know, they really interest me. I didn't really know Snap-on made linesman pliers until I saw another video on them and decided to pick them up and try them for myself. And obviously we just tested them here and you saw how they worked. Um, so with that being said, that's all I have for this video. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And if you uh, are new to the channel and you would like to see more content like this, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you enjoy the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up as well. But that's all I have for today's video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video to be uploaded.